Most of the time that I have been alive, all 35 years of it, no. <laughs> uh, 35 years as a Christian, I've been around a little longer than that. But I found that a lot of us operate from certain insecurities and fears that we have. That whether we put on a persona of confidence by wearing a uniform or having some vocation or some career profession, or whether we do it by way of having admirers, you know, around us, you know, a certain amount of people that tell us, you know, certain things to build up our ego and our super ego, our id, you know, our our personality, you know, to keep us, you know, on the straight and narrow or to keep us, you know, standing up strong and tall and proud. Or whether we are male or female, you know, and somehow we've got this persona that we have to be strong, you know, and be solid, you know, and be mighty, you know, men or women. I find when you cut through all the garbage, really, most people operate from a fear. You know, they're either afraid of being discovered for who they are, afraid to be real about what they are, you know, whether it be coming out of the closet because there's some kind of a emotional issue that they think that they're either gay or lesbian or they have some tangled up emotional problems that they have been abused as a child or they've been confused as a person. Whether it's a religious issue, you know, that they don't understand, you know, that there is a God or that they know there's a God but they don't know how to deal with that. You know, there's always seems to be in all of life some kind of fear that we're dealing with. You know, there's a a fear of discovery, a fear of revelation, a fear of the unknown, a fear of confrontation, a fear of people, a fear of, well, fear. <laughs> it seems that however you go about it, somehow mankind is dealing with fear of some kind. And God really wants to get to the place where we fear not, you know, for He's with us. That we have a a reverent, you know, like people say, you know, fear the Lord, you know, which is, it's a good thing, I guess, you know, I mean, there's a certain amount of awe and wonder, you know, that that kind of fear is what God is talking about, maybe like, wow, oh, boy, that's just too awesome, but love doesn't manifest itself in fear. As a matter of fact, the scriptures teach us that perfect love casts out all fear, and when we realize that we're loved, then we don't fear so much anymore. We don't fear what other people think of us. We don't fear what's going to become of us. We don't fear how you know much of ourselves is revealed. We just let it all hang out. <laughs> but maybe you haven't gotten there yet. So I kind of realized that, you know, and I was thinking about that this morning when I read the devotional that you know, a lot of people do have fear, you know, and they, it's unreasonable fear, but it's still fear, you know, like, I know, I've heard a lot of people tell me about 9-11, you know, I frankly didn't react to it at all, you know, it didn't affect me one way or the other, you know, it's kind of like, well, Lord, you know, there's another natural disaster, so to speak, natural man acting like natural man, which means that he's trying to kill natural man, you know, when you're operating in the natural world, you know, people are trying to kill each other. To me, that's just normal. You know, that's part of living as a stranger in this land that I don't, you know, this is not my home. This isn't not my world. You know, this is a, a world under the curse, you know, of, of God himself, but also kind of manipulated and being maneuvered by not just prophecy, but Satan himself. You know, he is the God of this world. And as long as he is, you know, because he hasn't been replaced yet, then things aren't going to operate the way they're supposed to. They're going to operate according to corruption, you know, and things the way they aren't supposed to. So I expect people to fear, you know, but at some point in time, you kind of got to put it aside. You got to kind of cast off fear and turn to the Lord, you know, and kind of look at Him and see that from Him comes your sufficiency. From Him comes your self-esteem or 
I like to say God esteem. How does God esteem you? You know, that should take away the fear of what people think about you. Because, you see, if Jesus died for you, then you must be pretty important. You know, if Jesus has given his life just for you, then there must be something really good about you. Or at least as far as we are concerned. If the very fact that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, there must be something redeemable about the world that we like to say, hey, you know what, maybe things aren't quite as bad as we think they are, if God would give his life for us. So, I like to kind of get rid of the fear by thinking about who's dear to my life, you know, by thinking about God because he's so important to me. It's like, I don't want to you know, go around my life, you know, that I remember when I was younger, I used to think when I got in trouble, uh-oh, what will mom think, you know? Or maybe you're the opposite, you know, what will dad think, you know? You really didn't want to disappoint your mom or your dad or disappoint your boss or your wife or your children or or your husband or whichever it may be. Somehow, you just didn't want to let them down, you know, and so you have that fear too. Well. That, that really can tear you up, you know, when you got all these fears, you know, and when I start listening to them, I think, my God, you know, what what do you do about it all? Oh, oh no, I can't live up to this this idea. I got a good word. Don't. <laughs> You're a screw up. Let the fear out. Guess what? You are blowing it. <laughs> Uh, you're you're just as much a mess up and screwed up as everybody else in this world. And they are too. They just won't admit it. You see, the Christian can go ahead and admit that they are screwed up and that they need God. And that's why we don't have fear. Because if we fail, then we know we have an advocate with the Father. Even Jesus Christ, our Lord, who takes care of our needs, takes care of our screw-ups, takes care of our failures, takes care of our fears. He comes to us and says, hey, Fear not, I am with you. Fear not, I am with you. Hey, look, fear not, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. And so, whenever we see, like, you know, things happening in the world, or, you know, the economy sucks, or, you know, the weather's changed, or, you know, the job's gone and the bills are here, you know, or life is coming to an end, I got cancer, ah, you know, you don't have to fear, really, seriously because Jesus said he's with you. And if God could have raised him from the dead, I mean, of all things, then what really are we going to fear since we know that if he got raised, well, certainly we're going to get raised. I mean, God said so. He said, in as much as, you know, he's done it to his son, you know, he'll do it for us, you know, because we trust him. And so that brings us to that point of, you know, kind of like, what do you do about fear, you know? And, I always kind of get back to that same thing, you know, that seems to be always the crux of our whole life, you know, that thing I keep mentioning over and over again, you know, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, you know, for everything in life, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, be not until thy own understanding, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he'll direct your path. You know, when you got that kind of trust, you really, you really look at the world a different way, you know, when you trust the Lord, you really don't fear what's coming up, the next shoe to drop. You kind of look forward to it, going, yes, man, check it out, watch this. You know, I'm waiting for that next shoe to drop, and I'm not going to panic. And then it drops, you go, oh, ooh, maybe the first reaction is a little bit of kind of nervousness, but then you go, but I trust in the Lord with all my heart, meaning not in my own understanding, in all my ways, I'm going to acknowledge it because I don't want to fear and he'll direct my back. <laughs> it's easy to stumble and bumble and fumble, but hey, after a while it gets easier, you know, and gradually, step by step, you take one little baby step after another, because just like a baby falls down, you're going to fall down. And when you fall down, you get back up. Hey, you know, maybe you didn't have the perfect marriage, or maybe you do. <laughs> hey, God bless you, you know, that's cool. <laughs> Uh, wait till tomorrow. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But you know, maybe you didn't have the perfect marriage or the perfect childhood or the perfect children, or maybe your life has been screwed up from one incident after another to another to another to another. And you think, man, how could God forgive me? Well, of course He can. That's God. 
That's why he's called God and you're not. Because <laughs> you can't forgive yourself. But he can forgive you. <laughs> so really, it's not it's not about being perfect. You know, I mean, God already knows you're not, and most of us do too. <laughs> but it is about learning to fear less and trust more. Because as you do, you'll find that your life will begin to get more of a sense of humor and take on less seriousness about how serious you think things are. Because a lot of times when we puff things up into bigger than they are, we, like a balloon, blow a lot of hot air into some circumstance. And then, as far as God's concerned, he's already got it covered because he sees the future. So he doesn't even see your hot air balloon that you filled up because he just kind of like goes, grabs it, you know, where you've got it all, you know, tied in a knot, and he just goes, unties it, and it goes, and all the air goes out of your fear or worry, because God says, trust me, I got it covered, I'm God, I created the universe, you know, me, God, bigger than you are, hey, got it covered, and suddenly all that hot air just goes, and it gets deflated, and then you go, what was I worried about, once you get on the other side, but you see, as you get through those circumstances one by one, then, you know, your balloons, as they get deflated one by one, you don't really want to blow them up because the only way to really have fear is to put your own hot air into it. And to have fear, you got to really blow hard, you know, because that's really what fear is. It's just some blow hard, you know, making you feel like you've got to worry about something that's just a, like a balloon that... I remember that, you know, song about what makes that little old land think he'll move that rubber tree plant? Doesn't he know an ant can't move a rubber tree plant? He keeps those high hopes, he keeps those high hopes, keeps those high apple pie in the sky. I hope. Why am I singing this song? Oh, because the song goes something about keeps those high hopes, keeps those high hopes, keeps those high apple pie in the sky. Hopes, problems, just a hot air balloon, soon they're bound to go pop. Oops, there goes another problem, Ker there we go. Just like problems that go kerplop in that song, High Hopes, that you have probably no idea what I was singing. <laughs> It's an old song, trust me, it's not even on YouTube. <laughs> or maybe it is now. But um, anyways, it's kind of like a Doris Day song, you know, of all things. But, uh, you know, it is. Uh, most of your problems are hot air balloons, you know, and you just pop them, you know. They're just getting popped one by one as you trust God to take care of them. Because even if you go through it and you have to stand before a judge or, you know, whatever, God's already said so. He said, you're going to go through it, but I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. Cool. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither shalt thou be confounded. For they shall not be put to shame, for they shall not forget the shame of thy youth, and shall not remember the reproach of the widowhood any more. For thy maker is thy husband, and the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. I have blotted out as a thick cloud your transgressions, and as a cloud your sins. Return unto me, for I have redeemed you. I, 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 I bought you. you know, you're mine. Hey, I've got you covered. You're my property. I'm going to take care of it. With precious blood of Jesus Christ, as of a lamb shed, as a lamb without blemish and without spot, their Redeemer is strong, and the Lord of hosts is his name. He shall thoroughly plead their cause. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hands. Grace be to you in peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God our Father, and to whom be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. God has really, and that's what people forget, you know, sometimes as Christians, delivered us. I mean, as far as he's concerned, done, accomplished, over with. We still have to live through it, but we're learning that, you know what, since it is, you know, down the road, I know I'm going to make it. 
I know I'm going to make it. And you just keep going. I know I'm going to make it. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. A little choo-choo, you know, going up over the... Okay, maybe you don't know all these songs. <laughs> the, little, the little train that said, I can. I think I can. I think I can. You know, well, you don't have to worry about thinking you can. You can. Because God is with you. God will take you through it. You will get over being afraid. You will have no reason to be dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with you wherever you go. He'll take you through the circumstances. Don't get me wrong. It'll get scary at times if you've never been through it before with God, but once you go through it a few times with God, it's kind of like when your little child, you know, gets scared, you know, grabs Daddy's hand and says, Daddy, I'm afraid. And you go, it's okay, son. I'm with you. I'll take you through it. It's kind of the same idea, you know. God will take you through it, even though you don't like to think of yourself like the little kid. But let's be real. I know you, you know, you're you're like me and you're like everyone else in the world. You know, you've got this insecure side inside, you know, somewhere, you know, your performance review didn't come through like you thought, or you got canned or fired or whatever, you know, you got your self esteem kind of emotionally wrapped up with whatever it was that kinda of like, you know, deflated, you know, in life for you and circumstances made you feel like, I'm not worth it anymore. Well, you are. Bluntly. Don't go there. That's stupid, you know. It's kind of like the person says, nobody loves me. Oh, bull. Give me a break. That's a pity party. God loves you. Get real. Come on, you already proved it. So don't even go there about, you know, stupid stuff. I mean, that's just you being dumb, you know. We're not that dumb. I mean, we're smarter than that if we're saved. We know that God loves us, you know, and that if God loves us so much that he gave his son, then we got to be worth something, you know. So... Don't even get into pity, you know, or, I'm no good. You know, it's like, oh, come on. Of course you're no good. So is everyone else no good. That's why God saved us, you know, so that we would be, quite frankly, good according to what He is, not according to what we do. Because when we do it, we make doo-doo. <laughs> but when He does it, it's done. See what I'm saying? It's accomplished. It's finished. It's over with. He has redeemed us by the precious blood of the Lamb. So because of Jesus, we can look at our salvation, our life, our destination as accomplished. We're there. We got it. Cool. It's done. It's a done deal, so to speak. It's kind of like when you sign a contract. You know, you're selling a house or whatever you may do. You sign a contract, but you don't really get what you want until they finally, you know, the papers close, you know, like when you sell a house, you know, it's finally closed escrow, you know, then suddenly you get the check, you go, <gasps> well, as soon as you sign the papers and closed escrow, you, you got it. It just took time to process it. Well, it's kind of what happened with you, you know. Papers have been signed for you. You know, your salvation has been signed for. You know, it's been taken care of, you know. It's going through escrow. You're going to be redeemed. You've already been redeemed, but you don't know it yet. But when you get there, then you'll know you were redeemed. If you don't get there, you weren't redeemed. <laughs> Tricky, isn't that? <laughs> Ooh, maybe I should fear. Uh, perfect love casts out fear. God loves you so much. You already know you're saved. Come on. He's got to keep your relationship in order. You know, kind of like, you know, do whatever it is you said you would do on the contract. Like, you know, gave Jesus your life. So, if you did, then all you got to do is talk to him. I mean, come on. Wouldn't you want to talk to somebody who loves you? So, fear not. For the Lord your God, you know, not only loves you, but he's already redeemed you. Check that out.